that I am. Sorry, I should have told you that I am recording this as well. Yeah. And I got to record like the first 10 minutes, so I apologize. <laughs> it's um, all good. So uh, we were talking about how, you know, your feelings about being um, moved to London to Chatham and how, uh, how everything, um, I'm just doing this for the viewers, but how you're yeah. moved from uh, London to uh, Chatham and, and how everything's happened and with how it's your feelings about how everything's kind of happened with the game seven and, you know, you feel a bit more emotional and everything. Um, yeah. yeah. And with all the teams and everything with the coronavirus happening. So it, it's unfortunate. Um, so now we're going up to speed again. Um, I hope you don't mind me recording this though. No, it's all good. Um, okay. So I got to ask you, so I remember, cause obviously I go to the games. And I do the pictures. I've seen you and Linker do this thing a couple times after like a win. You guys will oh, like, yeah. <laughs> you got to explain this. <laughs> uh, so that is kind of just a, it's kind of modeled after what Carey Price and PK Subban did in uh, Montreal where they do like the three high five thing, then the shoulder bump. And so I think it was after our first win together, he was like, we have to do something like, special just like to like be different and I was like okay sure he's like you know the like price suit man thing I was like yeah he's like let's do that I was like okay so like I went over like I went to the bench to grab my other stick and then we kind of just like started like the what we would do and I'd kind of just like waltz over then we'd do it and then go off the ice and it just started from the first game we just like kind of just took it into all of our other games because uh we just wanted to do something special like something different that set us apart Okay, right on. Yeah, because I, I was always wondering, like, and a couple of people in the crowd are like, what are they doing? I'm like, well, they, they must be happy with something. <laughs> We're <laughs> so, just goalies. We're just different. That's that's fair. That's fair. Um, mm-hmm. So how would you how would you describe yourself as a goalie? Like, what kind of, what would be more your style? Yeah, for people that I might not like, understand goalie, like the goalie stances. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like... Um, like as a goalie being tall like most tall goalies are supposed to just be like not as like agile and not have good footwork like they're just supposed to be like big guys that can just like get in front of the puck and stop it but I feel Mm -hmm. like I like I hit my growth spurt when I was like in grade nine or grade 10 so I've always been like a like kind of smaller goalies had to rely on like my technical ability like my speed and like that kind of stuff so like I feel like with my size I also add in like speed and like a technical side of my game that like I can move quick and move properly and like get into the right spots when I'm moving right right um have you ever had any problems with like altercations with other players um and the reason why I ask is you know people have gone to the games they see what's going on but you don't really see what's actually happening if you're actually on the ice have you ever had any Mm -hmm. problems with other teams you personally? Uh, with other teams, not, like, yeah, like, I've, like, yelled at guys and tried chirping guys, and I've been chirped back, but, like, nothing, like, personal or anything, like, bad. Like, it's just, like, the game, like, you're just, like, in the moment, and you're trying to, like, get under the other team's skin and, like, just trying to, like, get in their head. Like, with, uh, with the final LaSalle series, I know, like, the goalies and like the teams we were like bickering with each other and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. I know on that team is probably one of the like better relationships I have with like any goalies in the league just because I've known them both like I know Sabraka the U15 OHF camp me and him were roommates so okay I know him from that and then uh I played spring hockey with Malu and so I know, like, both of them, and we have good relationships. So it's just, like, in the game, like, you can, like, yell at each other and chirp and, like, get in each other's heads. But I didn't really have anything, like, personal with anyone, like, on right. any team. Oh, okay. How did you, uh, you know, at the home games and stuff, obviously, it's pretty well known about some of the, the guys in the crowd, and especially at yeah. the one end. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you take that as, like, you know, guys, calm down, or is it, like, do you like the energy of the crowd getting into I, it? I honestly like the energy, because I find that, like, I like feeding off of the people that are at the games, and I like, 
when like the fans are excited I feel like it gives me more momentum and gives me excitement and energy and it makes me want to like work harder for the people who are like in the crowd that are like giving it their all for us so I want to just give it like my all back to them okay that's fair that's fair yeah yeah like I mean Mm -hmm. there's some guys that you know I remember watching um it was one of the games you guys were playing I'm not sure if you were on the team yet I can't remember if this was when you got moved to Chatham or not but they had a game in in London and I think that the score was like 10 to 6 or something oh yeah that was my uh that was my last game in London yeah I remember that and I can remember on the broadcast, they were talking about how, how quiet the crowd was. And then one guy says, he's like, you know, he's like, it's not like Chatham. I mean, you got 40, 50 year olds yelling at 17 year old kids. And these guys are just junior players, like, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, I don't know. I felt it was kind of a little bit like hating on Chatham. Like it was very like bias. It's like, because they're mm-hmm. like hosting in London. Right. But I don't know. Yeah. They're, I don't think they're wrong. I mean, like. You got these, uh, you got these fifty-year-old guys just just yelling and carrying on at, at some, <laughs> even at you guys. Like I'm thinking these guys are, you know, these guys are young guys. Like you know, this isn't NHL. Like you, you know, pipe it down a little bit. You know. Yeah, I remember that. I like earlier on, I definitely had a few not so good experiences with the Chatham fans. Like I know, uh, my first like game junior B in Chatham like when I was with London was the home opener. So yeah, I, I don't think I heard anything quiet all night. Like all I heard was yelling at me from like behind me and in the crowd. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was definitely a good introduction to Chatham. And I was thinking in my head, I was like, wow, these people are crazy. So I was thinking like, oh my God, like I can't play in front of these people like ever again, because they're just like all over me. And then you know, two months later, I'm playing with them on my side. And I'm like, oh, now it kind of feels a little better that they're like on my side and like pushing for me instead of against me. Oh, yeah, 100 um, percent. Yeah, because, yeah, these just get some people that just can't realize that this is just junior hockey. Um, you mm-hmm. know, it's, it's interesting because. Uh, I would want to go watch my girlfriend play. She plays hockey as well, just like a like a host league, right? And there was yeah. a sign on there, and it and I and I took a picture of it. It has something like, uh, "Remember, parents, this is just a game. The refs are just volunteers. Um, this is not the NHL championship. So you know, please be respectful." And I had to put a caption on there for all the Karens out there, and uh, <laughs> and like. I don't know, like, it's just, I think people need to realize that you guys are, you know, for some people, like, they just want to play junior hockey and that's it. Like, nobody wants to, like, mm-hmm. there's some that don't want to move on. So it's like, why can't you just let the guys, why can't you just let the boys play and have fun? And and it's like, if you really don't know what's going out going out on there, on the like, if people don't understand what's going on on the ice, they, sh- they got to keep their mouth shut. Yeah. But, like, I can remember, I think it was about two or three years ago, it was the same thing. Like, uh, Chatham was in this was in the series with LaSalle, and LaSalle was really, like, I'm just looking at it as a as a fan perspective, but LaSalle was just terrible. Like, they were just, they were, they just, I mean, Chatham had their moments too, but uh, LaSalle would just, they were just, just doing really stupid penalties. And, and I remember this one guy, I think, uh, I think this is when this was the last year, maybe when they had the visors and they had to go back to the oh, game. Yeah. Um, but they had the visors, and one of the guys hit the guy in the mouth with a stick, and he got like four minutes in the box, and people were yelling at the ref, like he got, kicked the guy out of the game. But I think maybe he didn't. I think yeah, he drew blood, but it, I, I don't know. It, it, he got four or five minutes, and the guy went in the box, yeah. and a couple of these guys went kind of where those a lot of those people yell. Um, they went all the way around. And I started, like, pushing on the glass and, like, swearing and carrying on. And they got kicked out because just for, like, misconduct. Like, you don't like you do not do that. Like, there's kids, you know, like, there's a whole bunch of people mm-hmm. there that don't need to see that. And I, I, like, and I, before I was, before I was doing the Instagram and doing all the pictures, I was just watching as a fan. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, I know the kid did what he did, but, like, this kid's, like, I remember the one kid and he was like, he was one of the, I think he was just filling in for the, for the team. Like someone got kicked, got a misconduct, like game misconduct or something. 
and uh, and the one kid was just filling in. So this kid's probably like 15, 16, and you're yelling, mm-hmm. swearing, and you're like, probably this guy's probably like 30 years old yelling at this kid. I'm like, dude, lay it off, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I've had just an experience kinda... like that too. Uh, I peed in Kamoka. I think I AP'd in my minor midget and major midget year, but this was my minor midget year. I had, uh, I'd backed up for them because like before, like not like right then, but like a little while before, uh, their one goalie had a concussion. So I had to go in and back up with them and I wasn't like getting in games. I was just like backing up, which makes sense. Cause you don't expect like an AP goalie to ever play or anything. So, uh, we were, I was set to back up because the one goalie had an exam because it was college exams and it was like January ish. So like they had exams coming up. So I was at school, I was having my lunch and I got a call from the GM and I pick it up and he's like, Hey, is this Bryce? I was like, uh, yeah. He's like, Oh, uh, our other goalie's sick. So you're going to have to start tonight. I was like, wait, what? Like no other goalie. And he's like, yeah, it's just you coming. I was like, crap. So I uh, got on the bus and we were playing in Leamington. So, of course, they're going to have like a huge crowd there. So I think they were having some sort of event. So the crowd was like packed there. So I was getting like chirped all game. It was the first day I had my bleached hair for playoffs. So that looked even better, too. And uh, oh, the game didn't go too bad. Like we only lost like five three which isn't horrible but like no. it was crazy going into like a game playing against like 20 year olds when you're just like 15 and yeah it was crazy yeah no I can only imagine and that and and I think like um for a lot of guys that are just filling in like you know that I, I think it's a good opportunity for them to kind of show the coach and the organization kind of like what you got and I mean, I don't think any organization is is going to expect a guy from the from the affiliate team or the or the um, the other team, whatever they affiliate with, um, to you know to to do the job that you know your main goal is going to do. Um, yeah, you know, but it, at least in, in it, and I think it can be a positive and can be a negative because you know I mean you're coming in, you're nervous, so it's going to show on the ice, right? I mean, maybe yeah. not always, but it's going to show, um, I think sometimes in it, and it, uh, it, uh, you know, but you know, if you do a good job, you know, it kind of helps with like the next year. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, so you were saying that, um, that you are probably going to return to the Maroons next season. Yeah. It's you were sounding like, I'm going to be there. Okay. So you're probably going to return for next season, but you're ch- checking out a couple uh couple possible camps right yeah just, like just to like go to some camps and like play against like some higher level players that are gonna be playing in higher leagues and just like showing like in front of the coaches like what i can do and like just so they can like see me and have me in their minds so okay now when and and i mean i'm, I'm a big hockey fan um but the thing is i don't really understand a whole lot about how things in junior work so in the junior league, so you obviously you got um, you got moved to to Chatham Maroons. So how does that yeah. work? So you're on the team. Um, so when when they have their camps and stuff, how does that how does that work? Are you already guaranteed to be part of the team, or how does that transpire? Uh, they have to like tell you like what their plan is for you. So they have to like tell you if they like want you back or stuff like that. And they uh, they have to like let you know like prior to if they want you or not because if they don't then like you either have to be released or they have to like set a plan for you to like go down and play like junior c or something like that so okay the plan with me for chatham has always been they've wanted me to be with them for at least two years and i've been okay with that like i've been like yeah i want to be here for two years at least and like try to make something happen with this team so like it's just like up to the organization what their plan is for you, like what they're gonna do. Okay, no, that's sweet, man. Um, and I and I love to see you come back for the team. Um, I I know that mm-hmm. probably Linker won't be able to because he's probably too old, right? 
No, or, this is his uh, last year of Junior B, but he okay. requested a trade, and I think it's almost finalized. I've heard rumors about where he might be going and stuff. Like he's, I've heard that he's wanted to go back to Strathroy because that's his hometown, and I've heard stuff like with St. Mary's and St. Thomas because those are teams he's played to, with before, but right. I haven't heard anything set in stone, but I've heard that he's like requested a trade and i know now that we have hardy the uh new goalie from the a21 academy coming i'm pretty sure that they're gonna make him a trade to somewhere else oh really i think so yeah um so actually talking about that um for the upcoming possible season if hockey does resume and everything um so you obviously know about some of the guys that, are, that got committed to the team, right? Like Lucerelli, yeah. um, he obviously, he played for the Chiefs. Um, were you playing mm-hmm. with him at the same time? Uh, no, I wasn't. He's a year younger than me. So when oh, okay. I was playing with the Chiefs in my major midget year, he was in his minor midget year in Chatham. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he played for the Cyclones, I think, before that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, so uh, obviously you know about the guys. Do you? So do you know them personally? Any of them? Because there was the goalie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. I know. Um, I know Lucarelli and uh, Ryan Gagne from uh, when I was in Chatham. I worked out uh, at Athletes Fuel, and um, oh. they both worked out there. So I knew them both from there. And then I know um, Hardy, the new goalie, because he. Uh, he, I think it must have been like five or six years ago, probably. We played spring hockey together. I think it was just one tournament, but he was my goalie partner on that team. So I know oh, him wow. from there, too. Okay. That's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, because I've noticed um, when I've when I've done posts and like when I do the scores, or I do pictures and I put up like whatever's going to happen. Like if I do like the, uh, the player profiles and that's just simply just to kind of get you guys recognized, especially if people that just get traded or, or guys that are new to the team, I typically do that. Like I'll do it for everybody. Um, but I actually, the reason why I started doing it, I kind of (laughs) stole, I kind of stole the idea from my girlfriend. She, uh, that's what she does for the, the more town flags. So I started doing it and, uh, and I, when I've made these posts, I've kind of seen other guys from other teams that I know of that are, whether they be from another junior, junior B team in the, in the OJHL team or the go J, JHL team, sorry. Um, or they're from like a junior C. Um, so it seems like it, it kind of appears that everyone kind of knows each other. So is that kind yeah. of all on the ice or? Yeah. People say that the like hockey world is a small world and it, really is because like with spring hockey now and like all the like summer teams and like development stuff that you can like do like you're like connected to like everyone almost so like I've known like tons of people like I know like people from like all over like North America like I know a guy who is from Alaska and he plays hockey up there and I was at a camp with him so I know like people from like all over and like it just happens that like people just like fall into certain leagues and are on certain teams like I know with Malu on LaSalle like he played in Toronto his whole life I was always in like Elgin Middlesex so we never really crossed paths and then like Mm -hmm now we're in the same league because he's playing in Windsor with LaSalle and I'm in Chatham so it's just it happens like stuff just tends to fall into place right right and that's kind of and and like I said like that's kind of helpful for for you guys because then at least when you're playing against each other you know it's it's all game like how you were saying before Mm -hmm. you know nothing's really personal um you know it's all game and after a while it's like you guys laugh it off right um yeah but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, like for me, like I remember playing house league and everything was personal because just because, you know, like half the kids I didn't even know. And, you know, someone slaps me in the leg and I look over, I'm like, well, I'll see you in the parking lot after. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's unfortunate, um, for some people that, um, things that happen on the ice and they take it further and, and, uh, it's good to kind of keep that th- 
just to kind of keep it fun, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah. everyone's having fun. I mean, it's not fun to to lose, but you know, everyone's having fun mm-hmm. at the end of the day. It's something that you want to do, and that's that's what matters. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, so I kind of had a kind of went off topic here. So um, I guess the first one I'll ask. It was kind of um, uh, directed towards you were talking about um, working out at Athletes Fuel. Um, now I know I'm aware that a couple other guys off your team have worked out at Athletes Fuel. So part of that, um, I've also seen uh, who was it? Um, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. He got traded to Leamington last season. Uh, Michonne. Um, oh yeah. So with him, I've seen that he's had a thing where he's done like um, like uh, Cairo at like certain places in Chatham. So do you guys have something in your contract to say like this comes with your contract that you signed for the Maroons? Like do you get like uh, there's nothing like there's nothing specific that like you get like you just like get a contract and like they can recommend places you can go to to like do stuff like I know like. Tyler, like the head coach of the team, his brother runs at so like he like recommended to me to go there because he like knows what he's doing and he knows like the program that he has in place there and it's good and that like a bunch of pro guys work out there so like they like recommend stuff to you like where you can go to do stuff but it's like nothing like set in stone like that you have to do this and you get a discount there like it's just like recommendations and stuff like that. Okay. Um, now with, I, obviously I see that you have a maroon shirt, so I'm assuming that some mm-hmm. things you, you get to kind of keep, right? Or how, how yeah, does that work? Yeah, Uh, some teams, they, like, offer more than others. Like, some teams give, like, they help pay some of the registration fees. Some teams, like, give back in, like, form of, like, they give you, like, apparel and, like, gear and stuff like that. Like, I know in London, I got like a full tracksuit like ccm pants jacket i got a shirt and a water bottle and they also helped pay with some registration and i got like free sticks too and then uh like some other teams like i know they offer less so but yeah like chatham they gave me like warm-up gear a jacket and like also like a ton of stuff like so like okay. each team like offers like different stuff okay that's that's okay so um mm-hmm. with the guys that that just graduated from the team like like we're talking like the captain pretty much all the senior guys mm-hmm. um did so i'm assuming they get to keep their jerseys right i'm pretty sure they do i'm not sure what the team has given the word on that i know like in years past that they gave the jerseys away. Like that's what I've heard. So I assume they gave them their Jersey, but I'm not too sure. Okay. And talking about jerseys. So I'm, I think I'm probably right, but I could be wrong. So with the jerseys, I've noticed in the last four or five years that the Maroons don't keep, like they seem to keep the same numbers with the jerseys. So how does that work? Mm -hmm. Because I've seen like, do you guys have an option with numbers or they just assign it to you? Uh, I'm pretty sure you get to, like, pick, like, out of the numbers that are available, but it's not, like, a custom, like, where you get to pick, like, specifically, like, what number you want, like, that kind of thing. Like, I know my last year in Major Midget, like, we got to, like, pick our own, like, numbers, what we could wear, and I've always just worn 35, so I just stuck with that, but I know the next year I wanted to wear a different number, but uh, London wouldn't give me that because they their captain uh max vinogradov he uh he's the only guy left on their team although he just graduated so there's no one now that has their like own specific number and now they're just going with like set numbers from like i think like two to 24 or something so i know they couldn't give me my own number and i think chatham they just have the jerseys that they have so they have 130 and 31 so i wasn't able to pick my own number here either but it doesn't really matter because it's just like a number that you wear on the ice and you can't even see it anyway so yeah yeah Yeah, i guess that's true right um Mm -hmm. so if linker does leave the team 
uh, this season, uh, would you would you pick would you pick a different number or would you just stay with? 31? I think at this point, I think just because I wore thirty one for half a season already, I think there's no point in really switching. Like I know putting on my jersey each night, they're extremely tight, so maybe I could try on the other ones and see if they fit a little better. But <laughs> right. other than that factor, I don't really see any point in changing my number. Yeah, no, I can only imagine because, like, with your gear, it's just so much more bigger, right? And you have so much more Mm -hmm. stuff to put on. Um, And it's definitely easier when the two goalies they started with were, like, five, seven, five, nine, like, around (laughs) that height. And then me and Linker come in being, like, six foot and then, like, six foot three. And I'm barely fitting into this jersey. Like, it was a really tight fit. Like, it took me a few minutes to get it on each night. Yeah, no, I was gonna, say, <laughs> yeah, because I was gonna say because like you you don't normally put it all over, you don't put it even over your pants, so you have to just kind of cut well, it. Like... Just... And I didn't like because my pants they like kind of go up high, so I kind of right. just like having them underneath, so I don't like when I like lean over it like pulls up or anything. Like I kind of just like how it's just in there and doesn't really move. Right. Right. Um, so also I was going to ask with, uh, with your helmet, man. So I've noticed like, even when you're with a Na- London national, so you're like a Spider-Man guy or like, what's, what's the deal? <laughs> I, uh, I actually did like a full like interview in London about my mask for their like Rogers TV channel. Cause they wanted to know about it. So, uh, when I was little, I wanted like an incredible hulk mask for christmas and that's all i wanted and then my parents got me a spider-man one and i was like okay that works so i just wore that and i've even years i've had a I went to like this custom pad company and they actually made me Spider-Man pads. So I used to wear those too. And then I was like, okay, I need to switch back to like a name brand where it's like a little lighter and better. So I used to wear that too, but I've always just had a Spider-Man mask since like I was little and I've just kind of stuck with it. But no, I've definitely heard a bunch of chirps about that like oh spy you're so childish i'll be like okay what's your goalie have a white mask that's so cool like, yeah i don't care yeah no like, honestly no i'm not uh... style. like i don't care and, uh, no, no. I... and it's also given me some leeway to pull a few pranks on my team too like i remember a few years ago i was saying how i was gonna get new pads and they were like all wondering like oh are you gonna get spider-man pads i was like no i'm getting a thomas the tank engine pads and they're like oh you can't be serious about that i was like no i am i really am and uh one of the dads on the team is a graphic designer so he took a (laughs) pair of pads online and he like just like tinkered it and put like an image of thomas the tank engine over top of it so it looked like it was like an actual thing that was being made for me and everyone believed it for some reason after they saw the picture even though it said Vaughn, like, clearly on the side, but no one could, no one was smart enough to notice that. But, yeah, I have definitely pulled a few pranks over the years with that whole gag. <laughs> That's all right. Um, but, no, I, I mean, like, I think the helmet's pretty sweet. Like, I, mm-hmm. I don't think I've really seen anybody with a helmet like that. Because um, yeah. over the years with Chatham, like, a lot of them are pretty... I wouldn't say basic. Like I, I really like Linker's helmet as well. He's kind of got the, mm-hmm. uh, he's got a kind of a cool design as well. He's got like kind of like Chatham icons on it, and I think it's really sweet as well. Yeah. But I don't really think any Chatham goalies really had anything kind of out there. I guess like most of them have had, uh, yeah, had very basic. Like they got the Chatham M on it, and nothing really, in, not really anything special. I mean, maybe Brandon Johnson. Do you do you know who that is? I don't think I do. He he was no, the so. he was I think he was a backup for Chatham the first year I started coming back to the games, and then he became the main goalie because he was kicking ass in the uh, in the playoffs with Leamington, and uh, and his he had a pretty sick helmet. He had this like 
It was like a, uh, it was like kind of like, and it was like an old fashioned uh, Chamaroon uh, like logo. Mm. And he had it on like the side, and he had some other cool stuff on the other side. It was really sweet. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, no, I think your helmet's probably by by far the coolest helmet I've seen in in the junior hockey. Um, just because you know, just with that with the spidey eyes on the top, and with the mm-hmm. like with the with the webbing all around it, I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, so did you did you have to pay for that? Um, by our our I, I can't I, I can't remember the design name. Uh, RPM. RPM. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I um I got it in London. It's called Gilder's Design. I got it painted there before the start of the season, and it wasn't something they paid for. It was just something that I like wanted to get done because I've always had like a mask that was painted, so I got it done there and. Uh, after I got traded, I thought to myself, I was like, I can't wear a London Nationals mask on the Maroons. Like, it's blue. Like, can't do right. that. So I just went back there, and he offered to uh, um, paint it over again. Like, not, like, scrape it all down and restart it. Just, like, go over the blue with, like, black and just do that. So he offered to fix that. And then I uh, got the Chatham and... They were like, oh, you know, you could have just gotten it for free with the guys we got down here. I was like, well, that would have been something good to know when I got traded here. But now (laughs) that I've already gotten this done, it's kind of too late. So if it, like, ever chips off or anything like that, then I'll go to, like, RPM and, like, get them to help me out with it. But until that happens, I'm just probably going to stick with it how it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I've seen RPM do some really cool designs as well. Um, mm-hmm. I think I remember at the beginning beginning of the season, I think it was St. Thomas Stars. One of their goalies had a helmet, and they did like a. Uh, um, it was obviously it was like green. It was like the green kind of color, like the dark green. Yeah. But on the one side, they had like Guardians of the Galaxy on the on the one side, and then the <laughs> other side they had. Uh, I don't know if you know what Trailer Park Boys is, but they got like yeah they had like uh like bubbles with the ki- kitty, and it says like bad oh, kitty I on think the side. I know the one you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, I think I know. And uh, I just thought that it was like the coolest thing ever. But I don't know, mm-hmm. I because I I tried so all the games that we, that we were playing against St. Thomas, I never saw the the goalie helmet. So I really, I, I'm I'm thinking what happened was the person got a design and then they either got traded to a team or another team or something yeah, happened. Yeah, um, he, I never saw it again. They brought in. I th- I think the story was he played. Fanshaw College Baseball. So he was playing there, I think, from like September to like December or something. So he couldn't play with St. Thomas. So right. they would like have him come in whenever he could, but he wasn't always there. So they got a new skin and they got the goal in. And uh, so after they got those two, they were like, oh, we don't really need you anymore. We have two solid goalies that we're going to stick with. And they sent him to, I think, Port Stanley Junior C, I think is where he went. But, yeah, he got all new pads, all new stuff like that. And then I think he went there. So it definitely sucks when you, like, go out of your way and, like, get a bunch of stuff done for a team. And then you're just sent out of there. Oh. Yeah, no, I can only imagine because, like, I remember even with like Linker, like he didn't have anything really custom for a while. But I think after about a month, mm-hmm. a month and a half, once he kind of knew, like, okay, no, you're staying with the team. That I think that's when he got his custom helmet as well. Um, yeah, uh, it's you know what, and that's uh, what I was kind of talking about um, with like trading players and getting players from other teams, like buying players from other teams and buying veterans. I think it is a bit of a gamble with anything that you do in the sport. Cause you never know. I mean, you could have a great goalie and then he comes down to a team and he just, he chokes or he uh, just doesn't have that, that, uh, you know, he just doesn't have the same kind of team and, or you see a guy that goes to another team and plays so much better. And it's like, what the hell? So, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, um, mm-hmm. It is what it is, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, get a, I was going to ask you, um, what would probably be your favorite moments and moment or moments, or your not so favorite moment or moments of this of the past year? Uh, probably a couple of my favorite moments was definitely one was 
getting my first start, like first actual start, the last game before Christmas. I know St. Thomas being my hometown team, like I've always wanted to play there. So just like playing against them felt good. And like getting my first game after like a long time being with the team really felt good. So like getting in there and like getting a win in my first start too, that felt like really good. And then probably that little stretch I had where I had like two or three starts in a row, like I the one game in St. Thomas, I made it like up probably three or four big saves and we won like, I think it was like five, three. And then we played LaSalle two days later and I made that one like stick save across the crease. Yeah. I know that was... That's probably one of the best saves I've probably ever had. Like, that was, I kind of just stuck my stick out and hoped I was going to get a piece of it. Like, I know I've done that in practice where, like, in practice, it's usually me being lazy and not wanting to get across. I'll just stick my stick across and try to bat it out. And sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. But maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. And then uh, the low points was probably I thought I was doing good in London so like it was after the 10-6 Chatham game I, they called me into their room I was like oh okay and they were like yeah we want an older goalie and we're bringing a guy from Alberta so we're gonna have to move you somewhere else and they wanted me to go to junior C so they could still have my rights and then I could still play from next year but I was like no I feel like I can play at the junior B level now and I want to develop more so uh, I waited them out and made them find me a trade and Chatham was interested so I went there and probably another low point was the tough game against LaSalle where we lost 9-2 and it was my first game with the team and yeah it wasn't a good game I think I remember someone in the crowd yelling out we want our refund I was like oh god this is a great start but yeah no it was like I've had a lot of good memories this year and some bad ones and I just have to take them away into next year and do better oh 100 percent um you know like with that being said um, you know, with when you were telling me about what the what the goalie changes in London and everything, no, it's it's pretty obvious. Uh, when you came into Chatham, um, you were kind of thrown in the mix there because they went through, mm-hmm. I think, uh, Tiago Rocha and um, yeah, uh, there was that other fellow that that was Noah in there Zeppa, too. Yeah, yeah, Noah Zeppa, and then they brought in another guy. So there was you and, mm-hmm. and Linker for a bit, and then they tried bringing the uh, that other guy that came in. Did you feel like, oh, here we go again? Or did you say, okay, you know what? I'm confident in my abilities. They um they told me when they brought him in, they were like, we're bringing in uh, McTavish from out Ottawa way, and uh, we're going to see how he does and uh, if he can, like, have a good few starts here. And then from there, we'll see how we're doing with our team, if we're looking to make a push this year, if we're looking to rebuild, that kind of thing. And then we'll make a decision on if we're going to trade him or release him or keep him or what we're going to do. So, but they said that for sure, no matter what happens, my spot was secure. So that helped me feel a little safer inside but at the same time I was like I want to like push and like try to get starts because I want to show them that they don't need anyone else that I can just help this team and get this team to get some wins yeah no um you know it's I think from I think from like a fan perspective and I and I think more not so much me but like seeing other people what people have said in comments I've seen on Facebook like I don't know. I, like I said, going back to with the fans, they just say whatever they want and they don't really know what's yeah. going on. But I've seen, I would see comments like, oh, what's with them going through so many goalies? It's like, it's not the goalies problem and all that, but they don't really know what's going on, right? Like, you don't know the, yeah, the straight exactly. up stuff. Um, you know, like, and not just that, Have has it been, uh, has been difficult to go through so much changes with the team? Because for obvious reasons, like, you guys have gone through so many players and so many goalies. Has that been a bit mm-hmm. of like a, has it been a big change? Has that been hard to accustom to? Uh, it's definitely been something to like learn from. Like 
definitely like let's say you know Tate Bowden before they sent him down to uh, Blenheim. He that I really got along with because I was like new to Adam. I didn't know, and I'd known him from that U15 OHF camp. He was on my team, so I knew him from that. So I got to chat him. I attended Ursuline College, like down by the hospital. And uh, the only people I knew at that school was him and Tiago. And Tiago left after like a few days after I got there. So Tate was the only one I knew, so I, like, really bonded with him. Like, I had one religion class with him, so, uh, like, me and him got along well, and we still talk, so it was definitely tough, like, going through some, losing someone on your team that you wanted to stay, but at the same time, you have to think, like, that coaches wouldn't do this if it wasn't for the better of the team, so it's right. just something you have to deal with and then just, like, move on from. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm assuming that more than likely, if the guys aren't doing any, don't have any more future plans in, in terms of like college and et cetera, et cetera, um, you would think that, and I mean, because right now, if it wasn't for the COVID, they wouldn't be doing online classes because that's what I've been no. reading. I mm-hmm. think that's what I've been reading is they're going to be doing online classes in the fall. So, you know, that kind of gives the guys opportunity that maybe they could stay because I mean, what the reality is, if you're not going to school in Chatham, it's going to be difficult to go to school somewhere else, even if it's an hour away, and still commit to yeah. play for Chatham. And I know that's something that uh, that's what the what the brothers on like the Fisher brothers. I know that's something that they you know that was a lot of commitment to come from yeah. London to Chatham and and practice and and games and stuff. So you know, like with with uh, with boating and. Uh, uh, I can't say, Satano. I, I'm going to say Santano. If that's how you say his last name. Uh, but uh, with those two guys, I hope, because I know they got sent down. I, I, I do hope that they do um, come back out and, and play again because, you know, people know who they are, you know, for, for the, for, for rookie players that they were, they, they were playing very well. And I think that mm-hmm. um, just getting sent back down will help them when they do come back. Um so hopefully, you know, you'll get to see Bodine come back and at least you have someone that, yeah. you know, back on the team. Um, but in terms of uh, relationships and, and uh, I guess, rapport and stuff with, uh, on the team, uh, so everyone got along pretty well or was there any, like, yeah, issues there, with the team? There were, like, I've played on some teams where there's, like, one or two guys that are, like, kind of, like, emotional and, like, they like need it to be their way and blah 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 stuff like that but with like with our team like there'd be bickering and stuff but like it wasn't like it was just like as a joke like it wasn't like people like meant it or like going at like anyone on the team like everyone got along really well like from both of like the goalies to the defense to the forwards everyone just got along with each other well and like there wasn't any resentment between anyone or anything like that like everyone just got along well and was like good friends and there wasn't really any like arguments or anything everyone was just there to have a good time and try to get wins right right um so for the next season uh what what is it that you expect of yourself of myself i feel like last year was like a lot of me trying to get used to like playing against like older players and playing at a higher level so I feel like next year I'm not gonna have as much nerves I feel like I'm just gonna like sink in more like into the game and like just be myself in that and I feel like I even though I had like an okay year last year I feel like I still have like more to give and I feel like I have a lot more to show Chatham that like I can do more and just Mm -hmm. be myself and play better. Right. Yeah. I just have a few more questions for you um, because we're coming up Mm -hmm. on top here, but um, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to um, like idols and, and other players who, who are some uh, idols and let's talk about goalies here. Who would be, who are, who are some of your idols that you look up to when it comes to hockey? Uh, probably my favorite goalie that I've ever watched is, uh, Jonathan Quick, just cause he, he's not the biggest goalie ever. Like he's not like one of the like six, four, six, five guys in the NHL, but he's still 
one of the top goalies in the league because he knows how to use his like like positioning and technical ability just to like get in front of pucks and like be fast moving from across the net to like make Mm -hmm. big and key saves and at the same time like I like playing the puck a lot like I like going out like making passes that kind of thing and he's like really good at that too so okay okay um so what are like so obviously you know you're talking about um uh, probably coming back from the maroons and you're gonna do a couple camps but if we're looking down maybe a couple years down the road um what what are your future plans do you want to play college hockey uh do you just want to get right into the ohl because obviously you got you um you're picked by the Erie otters so yeah. is that something that you want to look forward to? What what is it that you like to do in a couple couple of years? Uh, honestly, this is what I told like the Maroons, like coaching staff and stuff. When I got to the team, they asked me about like what my future goal was too, and I told them that uh, I just want to play at the highest level that I possibly can. If it's like OHL, if it's NCAA, if it's like the OJHL, whatever it is, I just want to be at the highest level I can be. So if like, if junior B is the highest that I can make it, then I just want to be the best at that level then. So I just want to make it to the highest point that I can and play at the best that I can too. Oh, that's great. You know, and I mean, you know, you just keep doing what you're doing and, uh, you know, I mean, I think me, I, I, I can speak, I, I think for myself, I can speak for other you know the rest of fans i think that you know we're looking forward to having you back for for next season mm-hmm. um i just have one more fun question for you so um in right. terms other other than hockey um is there th- anything else that you like to play like any other sports you enjoy uh i know my family has always been like a big baseball family like we play a lot of sports here like my two younger brothers they're both basketball players and uh my older brother's an umpire so we've always played baseball and that stuff too but the one sport well there's a few sports that I've like that are kind of different that I've played before I know the past two or three years I've been playing tennis a lot I really enjoy that just like being out in the summer like being on a court like where it's hot and just like playing with some friends and another sport that I've played before I know I've like done it for my birthday a few times and I've done it in the league like in my hometown here a few times is uh curling I've uh we have a curling club here and it's it's not really taxing but it's really like strategic and you have to like be really precise with it and I've always really liked that about it too so okay. I've played a lot of sports but those are probably the ones that I've played the most well that's great um, I just wanted to uh, just wanted to thank you for coming on, taking your time to come on my show. And uh, like I said before, we're look, you know, I'm for sure I'm looking forward to seeing you come back for the Maroons, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do for the season. And I just want to, I want to, even if you don't come back for the Maroons, uh, good luck with whatever you do in your career, and hope to mm-hmm. we hope to see you soon. Yeah, and thanks for having me on. Hey, not a problem. And you stay safe, your family stays safe, and uh, we'll see what happens next season. (laughs) Yeah, you too. Thank you. Have a great day.